What is going on, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. As a part of today's video, we're going to be breaking down the recent development report, which has come out from Electric Capital, highlighting the growth in Cardano with respect to developers, regardless of whether or not they've contributed one time, part time, or full time. Now, this comes on the back of a pretty big narrative that Cardano has yet to um, evolve in terms of scaling and adoption. That said, Cardano has been somewhat on an island by itself, and I wanna actually show some data to kind of back that up and what we could potentially do in order to fix that hurdle moving forward. We've seen a lot of tooling, which I wanna go ahead and highlight as a part of today's video, which includes platforms, for example, like Icon, Option, Helios, as well as Marlow. So without any further ado, Let's go ahead and just jump right on in. And as we do that, you know, I want to just kind of quickly reiterate the importance of developers here, um, not just on Cardano, but just within the entire blockchain and Web3 first. So um, developers, ideally, they build apps. These apps that developers build should provide some sort of value to an end user. And given the fact that we can get a killer app, right, that will in turn bring more users into a particular ecosystem. Now, with more users and more customers, that also attracts not only additional developers, but that also attracts liquidity and adoption. So developers are at the very beginning of this entire equation. A blockchain without developers is a blockchain without apps, therefore a blockchain without users. Hopefully you guys understand the importance of developers just generally speaking and i also would like to just quickly add that we typically see developers as a leading indicator of future or potential growth so if we can continue to um, ameliorate the amount of developers and just the entire experience here on cardano that will then drive us to provide more value through applications which then in turn will attract more users and developers and that creates somewhat of a flywheel or a um, cycle where we begin to grow and grow grow and grow. So as I mentioned, we do have the report which has come out from Electric Capital. I'll go ahead and leave it down below. But what I want to quickly to show off here, right, is when we take a look at some of the top blockchains with developers working cross chain, Cardano's out here on an island by itself. Now, it's very similar to Mina Protocol, Hedera and XRP. And this doesn't just show that Cardano's on an island by itself. It shows exactly how strong some of these other ecosystems are when it comes to developers contributing to more than one blockchain so ideally we'd like to get to the point where we're connected like ethereum where we have you know all these other evm networks um, sharing developers right um, between cardano and some of those evm specific networks now we could potentially get some of this adoption through something like midnight or the partner chain model which has been talked about here quite extensively on the channel but i wanted to kick off the video by just highlighting the fact that cardano right now Technically, right, while we do have our own developers within the ecosystem, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute, that we are relatively on an island when it comes to um, developers that work on other networks and on Cardano at the same time. So now that we kind of understand the issue, let's talk about, you know, Cardano specifically and what we can do to make this um, process easier and to attract more developers to come into Cardano. So as it stands right now, taking a look at the actual report here, we have 170 full-time developers. I also want to just add this as a caveat that right now, this entire data set is not complete. There is help needed by the community to actually self-report on a platform like um, Electric Capital in order to make sure that they're looking at all the repos, or all the repositories that are building on Cardano, therefore counting all the developers here on Cardano. So keep in mind, these numbers are not the end-all be-all. I don't think that they're all encompassing but at least it's a great start for us to kind of gauge how Cardano grows moving forward into the next couple of years. So in addition to the 170 full-time developers, we have 490 monthly active devs with a total of 2,700 um, Cardano code repositories boasting over 3 million total commits. Again, as a caveat, commits are not all created equal. So you may have one commit that's, you know, um, encompassing of a thousand, a thousand lines of code for a pretty big feature upgrade, or you could have a very small commit, right, which might just be to add some sort of documentation or some sort of comments. You know, again, these all range um, in different shapes and they all come in in different sizes and amount of time that actually takes to put together the commit. So again, take these numbers with a grain of salt. 
Now, with respect to the actual types of developers that we're seeing here, if I scroll down just a little bit, in terms of multi-chain developers, I mean, in that light blue, you guys can see little to no growth here um, over the past two or so years. Now, we still have multi-chain developers, but not enough compared to other networks. Moving over to single chain developers, that's where Cardano begins to shine. So the majority of developers right now on Cardano, all focusing only on Cardano. I do think that a portion of this is due to the fact that we are utilizing something like Plutus, again, which was very difficult to learn early on. However, we've gotten upgrades, right, in the form of Plutus V2, which came in during the Valso hard fork. And then we're also expecting Plutus V3, hopefully sometime this year. So first thing I wanted to point out there is that Cardano does have quite a bit of developers, but the majority are um, single chain developers only focusing on Cardano. As it stands right now, we have about 44 multi-chain developers, whereas we have over 400 single chain or Cardano specific developers. Scrolling down a little bit further, I wanna talk about two other key charts that I noticed here. The first is gonna be the monthly active developers by developer type. So one-time developers, currently at the very bottom, we had about 100 at the, um, at the peak followed by the part-time developers, which are the majority right now on Cardano based off developer type, and then full-time developers right in the middle between one-time and part-time. Ideally, we'd like to see more full-time developers on Cardano than part-time. Again, um, there's quite a big difference here, almost twice as many um, part-time developers compared to full-time developers. Now, just because we have more part-time developers doesn't necessarily mean that we're heading in a bad uh, route or down a bad situation. Um, we could see actual contributions coming in from more full-time developers than part-time developers, even though there's more part-time developers and full-time developers. Now, scrolling over to the right, we have monthly active developers by tenure. So if you take a look at newcomers here, we can see that there was a huge spike of brand newcomers in 2022 all the way to 2023. There's been quite a steep drop off in new developers since the beginning of this new year. With respect to emerging developers, that is on the rise, very similar to established developers, which is actually overtaking the amount of newcomers um, on the network. So interesting and a positive um, chart movement here when it comes to established developers um, compared to emerging and newcomers. So that particular chart does appear to be um, showing some positive growth in the right direction. Now, I mentioned earlier, even though we have more part-time developers coming on the chain right now compared to full-time developers, if we take a look at the commits by uh, type, right? If we take a look at commits by one-time developers at the very bottom uh, there on the bottom left-hand side, we can see little to no commits or activity coming in from those one-time developers. So even though one-time developers are on the rise, we need more stability and more contribution from them. Now, if we take a look at uh, commits by part-time developers, that is right between the commits by one-time and full-time. If I take a look at the full-time developers here, even though we have less of them on Cardano, they're contributing to the majority of the commits or the majority of the code being deployed on the network. So an interesting correlation to keep in mind there when looking at the um, developers by the type. Now, this takes me to this next piece that I want to basically mention, which is the difficulty, right, with respect to developing on Cardano. So that's been one of the biggest talking points here when people have highlighted Cardano compared to EVM networks where people are basically able to copy and paste or fork existing EVM specific code in multiple different languages on other existing EVM networks. Now, the majority of EVM code is written in Solidity, whereas on Cardano, a lot of the code, at least early on, was written in Haskell. So with respect to that, we do have a lot of new platforms, which I wanna go ahead and just take a minute to highlight quite a few of them. Now, before I highlight those, I wanna kick off with Plutus. So I mentioned earlier, Plutus V1 was what we got right before the Vassal hard fork. So Plutus V1 was actually introduced during the Alonzo hard fork. Now, Plutus V2, as I mentioned, was introduced during Vassal. 
And that brought along SIP number 31, SIP number 32, and SIP number 33. Those include reference inputs, inline datums, and reference scripts. The biggest thing here in a TLDR manner is the fact that Plutus V2 was much more lightweight and it simplified, right, the amount of um, code that would be needed to execute the same amount of function, I should say, utilizing Plutus V1. In addition, we now have Icon, right, which is going to be a smart contract platform built on Cardano. Now, Icon is going to be taking advantage of Rust-based um, users or users that are familiar with Rust and other platform, for example, like Polkadot also use Rust as well. So it states here that Icon is going to be small and easy to learn with strong static typing in inference, as well as first class functions and everything written in Icon will basically be classified as an expression. In addition, we also have Helios, which is also aiming to simplify development here on Cardano. Now, as opposed to utilizing um, Rust or as opposed to benefiting Rust experienced developers, Helios is going to be targeted for JavaScript or TypeScript users or people that are familiar with JavaScript and TypeScript. So again, this is a platform aiming to simplify smart contract development on Cardano. Third, we have a platform called Option, and this is going to be catering to the Python community. So as it reads here, Option will be a Pythonic programming language, which is 100% valid via Python 3. Again, very similar to Icon, it provides strong static typing with inference, and it'll provide things such as loops, custom types, recursion, and imports. So I wanted to quickly touch on the fact that development here on Cardano is getting easier. Um, as more people talk about, you know, how Cardano needs more and more adoption, we're seeing more and more platforms coming out to hopefully help us to begin to bridge the gap between developers that are contributing to Cardano and other networks, for example, like Ethereum, Cosmos, Polkadot, Kusama, um, Starknet, Solana, etc. So hopefully you guys found this particular video to be helpful as a part of this update. Again, I want to touch on the report put out by Capital Electric, as well as just a brief review and a recap of some of the platforms that we have building on Cardano right now that are aiming to simplify development. So shout out to um, Plutus V2, shout out to Icon, shout out to Helios, shout out to Option, Plutarch. Um, there's just so many other platforms that are building to abstract and to simplify the development here taking place on Cardano. That will do it here for today's video. As always, if you guys found this to be helpful or timely, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by App Central and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me surrounding anything we've chatted about as a part of today's video, then make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.